Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to showcase a, a car real quick here. We got a 2018 Hyundai Elantra. Now, normally I absolutely despise Hyundais. Uh, they don't tend to last over uh, the long haul, um, but they are making them better, a lot better than they used to be uh, for the single focus. This guy has 22,000 miles on it. Um, been driving around only the city and it's doing about 27 miles to the gallon according to the little trip computer. Uh, it's rated at 32 city, 40 highway, um, so I'm definitely not quite getting that, but I wanted to do a little walk around video and show you little things I've noticed about this 2018 Elantra and, and just talk about my experience with it. I've been driving around in this thing for a week, so I kind of have a good grasp on uh, what it's like. <laughs> turn, turn the radio on, my bad. All right, let's go outside and take a look at it. One of the first few things I noticed was these wheels are really tasteful looking. They are 16 inch wheels. Uh, it's got disc brakes in the back. That's pretty cool too. Um, let's get a little side view of this thing. I think it's super sporty looking. Kind of low to the ground. Um, if you're a little older, I don't imagine getting in and out of this thing is going to be ideal uh, as it does sit quite low. It's got a uh, little halogen projector style headlights. Uh, again, this is a 2018, and it's it's not really, it handles sporty, but the engine is not sporty. When the headlights are on auto and it's dark enough uh, to trigger auto headlights, they'll come on when you unlock the vehicle. This is kind of a nice little front view. It also looks cool if you're just cruising around in it with just its parking lights on too. I know some people are into that. I'll give you guys a little view of the rear end. Also, there's like sensors somewhere. This thing has the uh, that uh, assist blind spot assistance, so that if there's a vehicle, you know, kind of coming over here in your blind spot while you're moving, oh, it relocked itself just now, so I didn't open the doors. Uh, then it, it alerts when you uh, puts a little yellow light on either one of the mirrors, and if you blinker that direction, it beeps at you. So I got my a bag in here of mine right now. I would say this is probably a two-body trunk, um, maybe three, you know, if you're lucky. And I'll go ahead and show you the back seat. Again, I've got junk in here. Um, gray and black, it's pretty tasteful colored. I like it. It doesn't have a center um, armrest that folds down like a lot of cars do. In the back here, the only thing you're gonna get is cup holders. It's actually pretty substantial. It is a heavy duty cup holder and it kinda comes out in a swooping fashion. Got hard plastic on the backs of the seats. Dome light up there. And I believe all of the OS handles or they kind of do that little silicone dampened actuation where you pull down and let go and it goes whoop, like that. Glove box is not like that. It just clunks down. Now on to cool quirky things I found out about this car. No matter which door it's open, uh, it shows it on a little animation. When you close the door, it closes there too, only we got interrupted with the Hyundai logo. Now when you start up the vehicle, it does a quick system check. That's the blind spot monitoring thing right there. So we can start it. Oh, also it's got a, this is a pretty color over here. If I, what do I have to do to make that come on? Open the door. Yep. Cool colored glowing ring light. System check. All right. So a couple quirky little things that I wanted to point out that I haven't seen on any other car, but I think are really cool on this one. As far as the headlights go, you know, the stock itself isn't illuminated or anything. So you can't really see, you know, in the dark what you're doing. Now, if you start moving this around, however, it shows you up here, see DRL off, auto headlights, parking lights, full on lights. It starts showing it up here. So that's kind of cool. Also shows which uh, what gear you're in up there. So we got you know park, reverse, 
Now, if you're in reverse, it also beeps if you've got cross traffic behind you, which is really nice when you're backing up out of a parking space and you don't happen to notice the car sneak in towards you. It'll beep at you and let you know there's a vehicle coming. As far as the blinker stock goes, it does a similar thing that the lights do. So when you go to put it in position here, it shows you what position it's in. And it does that with the intermittent feature also, which I thought, I've never noticed one of these, so I thought this was kind of cool. So if you look at the blinker, I mean the uh, intermittent wipers, on the back side you've got, you can, you can feel the button over here too. So when you grab it, there's no doubt in your mind what you're, what you're up to here as far as the intermittent wipers are concerned. Uh, over here we've got that blind spot monitoring thing, so it's a BSD off, but when you turn it on, uh, they'll cycle through and they show you that they're working. And then we've got, you know, the dashboard illumination brightness. Um, this thing does Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I think is what it's called. I don't use Android, so I don't... I know what the Apple CarPlay one's called. I'm not sure about the Android one. And you notice all the cool gauges are very neat color of blue. I don't know if that's indigo blue or what color that is exactly. Um, to mute the radio, this actually, boop, you push it and, it and it mutes it. Didn't find that out until like day five. Um, it does not have automatic climate control, but it's got the simple knobs that, that you can figure out. Probably maybe even easier than automatic climate control. Transmission does have uh, different drive modes. So right now it's an Eco. See where it says Eco. If I push it once, it goes to Sport. If I push it again, it goes to nothing. So I'm assuming that means normal mode, not positive. But we, I've been keeping it in Eco um, anyway. Not really going to go through any of this, but it does give you, along with this, the ability to configure certain things, so your tire pressure, change the way the lights operate, the way the door locks. Pretty standard stuff in a lot of a lot of vehicles nowadays. Like I said, the engine's not that zippy, but I am going to upload a, se a separate video showing you zero to sixty. Uh, so you, in in all three drive modes. Um, so be looking for that video. It'll be right around this video. Uh, if I'm lucky and I can <laughs> link the videos together, I'll link them. Um, steering's pretty pretty on point as far as the weightedness of it goes. Uh, I got a regular rear view mirror. You got your Ray-Ban holder, or Oakley's, whatever, you know. Uh, individual lights up here. Standard sounding horn. Oh, one thing about that horn. Oh, and this is also, so here you've got your mirrors and stuff, mirror adjustment, child lockout for the windows, power door locks, and, and the windows. But you heard that, the, you know, the horn was pretty normal. I'm gonna show you what the horn sounds like when you actually lock this thing. It is the most horrible, little horn sound. All right, are you ready for it? Prepare to be embarrassed. We're gonna lock it, and then we're gonna push it a second time to make the little horn honk. Cheapest sounding horn ever. Now we're gonna pretend we're getting in and out of the car. See that cool little open door animation? And we'll see it close, but it likes to go to that Hyundai thing. So again, Hyundai's can get pretty good miles on them. I, I think this is a timing belt engine. I'll annotate it down here if it's a timing belt or not. If it's a belt, of course, it requires more maintenance than an engine that uses a timing chain. Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out is it does have, you know, traction and stability control, which is pretty standard knowledge of today's cars. Um, I think it's the tires on this thing that aren't so good. Um, now, if you baby this thing in the snow and you live in icy neighborhoods like I do, um, it does okay. Now, if you have to do anything serious, like try to avoid hitting something, or you're just trying to play around with the car a little bit, this thing falls flat on its face. It does not know what to do. The stability control is very delayed in it. I've experienced it in several cars that I've owned, and I know how stability works, I know how traction control works, but on this vehicle, it just seems to be laggy. It's a little slow. And then when it does engage, it's a little unpredictable, and this vehicle gets very squirrely. I believe it's just the, the junky tires that are on it right now. 
Um, so I would do yourself a favor and if you live where it snows or it gets icy, I would get some winter tires on this thing. So yeah, look forward to uh, doing the zero to 60 videos. Thank you guys for watching this. I hope if you're in the market for this or whatever that you see a car review that's not done by a professional car guy, I just try to point out the normal things that you're going to notice on an everyday um, use of the thing and and try to be real with the words that I use. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.